So there's quite a number of different medications available to us now in the treatment of narcolepsy. How do we decide, you know, how are we going to treat a patient with narcolepsy? Do you have a particular sort of uh, algorithm you use, uh, Alon, for treating narcolepsy? What would be your first sort of go-to drugs for narcolepsy now? That's a really important question. I, I have to say that um, I do not have an algorithm that I fit the patient through, and, and that's the only algorithm I follow, because all of these medications have their pluses and minuses. Patients may present with a, narcolepsy in a different, uh, as a different phenotype, in that some patients may have underlying depression or anxiety, some may have a certain uh, side or, or certain underlying comorbidities for which some of these agents uh, may not be the most appropriate first-line therapy. And I'll, I'll just say that as a general rule for folks who have narcolepsy type 1 and type 2, the uh, one drug that most people have resorted to, um, or the group of, of drugs, are the wake-promoting agents. And the advantage here, it's a once-a-day, perhaps twice-a-day type formulation. Uh, patients take it uh, in the morning, they may follow with a second dose, say, uh, later in the morning or early afternoon. And uh, there may be an ability at that point to assess the patient and take a, um, and, and evaluate if additional add-on therapy needs to be taken. And, and for those individuals, if they do feel sleepy at one, two o'clock, or if they feel sleepy to the point that it's affecting their driving, then a short-acting methafenidate medication, methophelamine, would, would actually be uh, effective. Now, uh, the, the other patient who presents with a excessive daytime sleepiness and cataplexy, and where the cataplexy is quite frequent, that particular patient would probably be uh, most appropriately uh, treated with sodium oxalate. You have one drug that does, addresses multiple facets of the disease by being taken uh, at night and with a second dose uh, two to four hours later. And the advantage here is both improvement of daytime sleepiness and uh, very effective improvement of cataplexy. Bear in mind that a lot of patients who have cataplexy um, may have a, a few episodes per week, or uh, individuals who may not require a traditional therapy or a specific therapy for cataplexy itself, uh, and are able to manage it by avoiding situations. Nothing that I would advocate the patients do, but uh, they may not require a specific therapy directed at the, at the cataplexy. Now, um, having this uh, uh, um, outline, I think that with the new agent, uh, um, the pitolisant and sorry, amphetol, uh, the ability now to be able to provide treatments uh, for those who still have daytime sleepiness with the traditional stimulants and the wake promoting agents and knowing that between 10 to 60% of those patients still experience significant uh, daytime sleepiness that is paralyzing them. I think the ability to then go to other groups of uh, treatments and maybe provide add-on therapy is, is probably uh, going to be uh, advocated for because not one patient would be uh, treated with one drug that will do the magic itself and then that we will have to experiment with multiple add-on therapies based on the patient phenotype.